Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just put a short video together, just investigating an engine light fault on this 2013 Ford Transit Custom. That's the 2.2 this one. Just show you, if we just strike it up, the issue that we've got, the little engine warning lights on there. Now I'll just run you through the fault code that we've got, what the um, what sensor it relates to, and the fault that we've found with this one and how to fix it. So we've done a full scan with a uh, diagnostic machine. We're using the Top Down Phoenix Light 2. We've got a couple of faults in the engine ecu here now we have got a separate fault which is relating to um a charging issue this is another issue that we've got to look into and um, which has actually been on it for a little while now but the main one we're looking into tonight is this p0098 intake air temperature sensor 2 circuit high now this the air temperature sense the air temperature can be read through the airflow meter as well but this is a separate sensor which i'll show you where that's located um, there's a good chance you might have a, a faulty sensor. I'll put a link to a sensor in the description below where you can get one from. Um, but we've actually got a different issue with this one. Um, but just for now, I'll just get the vehicle up in the air to show you where the sensor's located and which one you want to be looking at for this exact code. So. Now, if you're interested in the diagnostic machine we're using or any tools that we use tonight, just check the description below. I'll put links to them all. And also, there's a few other videos on the transit you might want to check out on the channel as well. Um, but we'll just get it up in the air now and just show you where the sensor's located. And just before we pop it up in there, I'll just show you one of the other places that the temperature is often recorded from, um, which is the airflow meter here. If you, these are quite common, if you do have an issue with one of these, they're really easy to replace. Just simply a couple of torque screws holding it on. Just need to undo the connector, pop it off and swap it over. Um, but this exact code actually relates to the second air temp sensor. So we'll just get it up in the air and just show you where that's located. Right, so if you just come underneath the van and just look look back round at the front, basically we've got the intercooler here and your air intake sensor is this one that actually bolts directly into the side of the intercooler here. Now you can see on this one straight away, the issue that we've got, we've actually got a broken wire right into the connector there. But the, the actual sensors are quite common, they just basically look like this, really easy to replace. Just a torque shedded screw, just holding them in. So if you've got a faulty sensor, it's just simply a case of undoing that torque screw and replacing the sensor. Now I did check on the actual data on the diagnostic machine and it was reading a default fixed um, temperature of 20 degrees, which it just sets itself back automatically if it picks up a fault like so. so um, obviously you can see we've got broken wire there. So I'm just simply gonna do a repair on this. Then we'll just give it a run now the fault you could clear the fault code out it would stay out for about half a mile and it would come straight back on so i'm just going to attempt to repair this see if we can actually get the pin out do some sort of repair on it put it back then we'll clear the code and give it a run see if it fixes it hopefully it's just the wire that's the issue and there isn't actually an issue with the sensor itself as well so i'll just do that quickly now um, if you do need a sensor if you check the link above or the link in the description below i'll put a link to where you can get one from Uh, so we've got the connector out there and all you need to do is just flick out the little yellow retainer there and basically we've got these little terminal tools again i'll put a link in them a link for them in the description below and all that does is just release the two little tabs just either side and then once you've released them you can simply just press it out so obviously they did, this did just pull off real tight to the to the edge there so we're going to see what we can do i haven't actually got any repair terminals so i'm going to have to see if i can just it might be a bit of a temporary thing we'll have to see if i can get a solder connector on there um, but it's probably going to be a little bit too tight because there's not a lot of room there so i might just see if i can actually just solder it to join it and then just seal over it just temporary just so we can test that it works and then I might look for a repair connector and just join a new connector into the loom.
Uh, so just managed to find uh, quite a fine solder connector to do that and it has actually gone on quite well. I'll just try and focus in on that. You can just see it's just about enough space. They're really nice little connectors to use these. Just has a little band of solder in the centre to heat up and two little sort of heat shrink bands on the edge. And normally I'd like to put a bit of heat shrink around the outside, but obviously with this being a really tight space, I've just done it with this, um, just the connector. But they're a nice connector. They give a good watertight connection. Um, but they come in a set. There's a choice of different sizes there and just simply heated it up with a little port of salt. A gas torch there so just give a re really nice seal connection so all i'll do is just pop this back together now we'll just refit it just clear that code and just make sure it fixes the fault Right, so that's all repaired, all back into place now, all clipped up. Now this clip was actually out before, um, it is a little bit warm, but it's actually gone in and clipped in okay. So, um, But now that's, up, that's back together, I'll just drop it back down and clear that fault code out. Right, so all the fault codes are cleared now. Just had a quick look on the actual data just to make sure it was reading. It just showed, showed the voltage there as well. Obviously, we know it definitely wasn't going to be reading correctly with that wire um, broken off where it was. Um, but before it was fixed at 20 degrees, whereas when I first went in there, when it was on 90 and then moved to 20, and it has been moving. The other one was started at about 25 and then dropped down. But obviously, with them being different places over the engine, sometimes they can alter slightly on temperature, that's all. So. Um, but just for now, I'll just give it a quick run, make sure the folks fault light stays out and uh, let you know that we've definitely fixed the fault right so we've just got back from road test we've done three miles it's run absolutely spot on the engine warning lights not come back on as i said before it literally had to do about half a mile and it had come back on we've done a full diagnostic scan and it's all clean there's no fault codes in there back in the engine ecu uh, obviously at some point the fault with the the generator issue that we've got will come back that is another fault that we need to look into um hopefully we'll do a video on that as well one day so we yeah keep it on the channel for further videos i hope the video helped if it did give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and we'll see you next time